Hello, you're watching News Mongolia on MNB World, and I'm your host, Jarathma Tufnjarat. Over top stories for today. A technology and culture forum for experts from Japan, Mongolia, and China was held in Ulaanbaatar. Mongolia ranks first worldwide in cases of liver cancer. The Asia Folk 2024 festival has ended. For the news, stay tuned. A forum for technology and culture experts was held with participation from over 200 experts from Japan, Mongolia, and China. They discussed technological advancements and explored artificial intelligence-based solutions to showcase Mongolia's national culture on the international stage in virtual environments. This initiative will provide an opportunity to delve into the life, heritage, culture and art of the nomadic Mongolians in virtual environments. Through a digital platform, people worldwide can gain insights into Mongolia's rich heritage and culture. Virtual environments are also an opportunity to innovatively showcase the distinctive characteristics of historical monuments. This initiative incorporates digital content and social game development. It's receiving support from the government through policies to enhance cultural heritage knowledge and understanding through technology integration. The goal is to promote Mongolian cultural values globally. Given the current social environment and the emergence of the metaverse, efforts should be directed toward creating a cultural heritage environment in the metaverse. We have a rich history, but unfortunately, much of it has been forgotten. Meanwhile, Japan is making tremendous strides in developing artificial intelligence and is an undoubted leader in this field. Although we may currently see this as a missed opportunity, we believe there is still a chance to seize the next opportunity and make progress. In some countries, creative cultural production contributes up to 4% of the gross domestic product. Mongolia's share stands at only 0.4%. It's crucial to enhance policies supporting the creative cultural sector and intensified development. Experts suggest increasing cultural exports and localizing digital development efforts. More than 7,000 people in Mongolia are diagnosed with cancer annually, with liver cancer accounting for nearly 40% of these cases. Research shows that Mongolia leads the world in liver cancer-related deaths. Medical experts attribute this to many patients seeking medical attention only when their cancer is at an advanced stage, significantly reducing their chances of survival. Physicians at the National Cancer Center are diligently working to implement the latest treatments effectively. Liver cancer accounts for 33.2% of all cancer cases in Mongolia. As of 2022, 4,548 people in Mongolia have died from liver cancer. For every 100,000 people in Mongolia, 100 people die from liver cancer. A recent study indicates that more than 400,000 people in Mongolia have been diagnosed with hepatitis B and C virus infections. Medical experts say that liver transplant surgery in Mongolia is a complex procedure that lasts 10 to 12 hours. They warn that it is crucial for people to undergo early diagnosis and receive treatment to prevent death from this disease. Numerous factors contribute to the development of hepatitis B, C and D infections, including alcohol consumption and various metabolic conditions. This prevalence is particularly high in Mongolia due to multiple risk factors. The incidence of cancer is also elevated in individuals over 40 years old, which closely linked to the high prevalence of hepatitis B and C in the Mongolian population within hospital environments and across Mongolia. Many advanced technologies have emerged for treating late-stage liver cancer, and Mongolian doctors are actively localizing these innovations. 
There are several treatment options available for tumors ranging from 2 to 5 centimeters, including targeted therapy, immunotherapy, and chemotherapy. Liver transplants are often recommended for patients with tumors larger than 5 centimeters. Doctors are also exploring the use of 3D technology in surgical procedures, drawing from international experiences and expertise. When dealing with early tumors smaller than 3 cm, our angiography team can achieve complete remission and avoid surgery by inserting a needle into the liver and ablating the tumor. This approach allows patients to resume normal life swiftly post-operation, avoiding scars and prolonged hospital stays. Um, I am a uh, liver and uh, hepatobiliary as well as liver transplant surgeons in New York. And I'm here uh, on behalf of the Virtue Foundation, which is a non-profit organization uh, in New York that has done many uh, surgical missions in 25 uh, countries. Uh, and um, we, I'm here representing the uh, liver hepatobiliary team. Uh, and it, it's been an honor um, that I was invited here for my second trip here, mission trip in Mongolia, um, where I've uh, uh, been working with Dr. Unenbat uh, um, and have been experiencing his, um, uh, you know, his, his service here. Uh, Mongolia, um, as you know, is uh, the leading, one of the leading countries in HCC because of hepatitis. Um, and it's been a pleasure being back here. And uh, essentially what the uh, team has done, has, has, has perf are performing now since 2018, uh, living donor liver transplantation. Uh, and they are uh, probably aiming to do around 70 cases this year. Uh, on living donation and today I had the privilege to uh, assist on one of the cases uh, that is ongoing right now. It's a living donor transplant in a patient who has, hepat has hepatocellular cellular carcinoma that was treated and now is undergoing transplantation. What would you say about the development of Mongolia's um, these cancer uh, centers, maybe uh, equipment or the ability of doctors, maybe. Uh, when did you arrive here in, uh, for the first time? Is there any development? <laughs> yeah, so I've been here for a little bit over 10 years ago. Um, and I, I must say, um, already back then, uh, the surgeons were very advanced. Uh, and, but transplantation was not uh, part of their program. And this initiated in 2018. Um, and I have to say, comparing my experience to the experience that I had uh, t over 10 years ago, um, I think the surgeons have really rapidly involved in their techniques um, and uh, are, uh, you know, is a great, great team player, um, a wonderful nursing staff and, and, and help. And I think it's been a humbling experience for me. Um, to uh, compare what we do in, in the U.S. and here. And, and I must say that there have been terrific surgeons and Dr. Unenbutt has done a terrific job uh, of pushing uh, his team forward uh, and, and having very comparable results to many countries that have started uh, you know, living donation uh, way ahead of him. Doctors and nurses at the National Cancer Center have highlighted the positive impact of a national programs initiated by the Mongolian government to expand access to treatment services for a larger segment of the population. More initiatives are expected to facilitate easier access to treatment services with health insurance coverage. You're watching News Mongolia on MNB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolian current affairs. The Asia Folk 2024 Folk Art and Handicraft Festival of Asian Cities was organized from 14th to 16th of June under the auspices of the governor of the capital city and the mayor of Lambatar for the second year. First, it was organized in 2019 under the auspices of the Prime Minister of Mongolia. This year, Mongolia welcomed 160 artists from the People's Republic of China, the Republic of Korea, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Uzbekistan, India, Japan, and Iran. This festival not only allows foreign tourists and Mongolians the opportunity to get acquainted with the cultural heritage 
and folk art of Asian countries, but also develops into a major cultural, industrial and tourism brand named after the city of Ulaanbaatar. The festival was organized with the help and support of the capital city's culture and arts department, Ulaanbaatar City's small and medium enterprise support center and Artler Culture NGO and the World Association of Folklore Festivals. The ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of Mongolia to the Kingdom of Bhutan Ambald paid a courtesy call on the Speaker of the National Assembly of Bhutan, Wangchuk Namgyel, on June 11, 2024. Upon warmly receiving Ambassador Gambold and the Mongolian delegation, the Speaker expressed his gratitude to Mongolia for providing scholarships to Bhutanese students to study traditional medicine and supporting Bhutan's livestock farming. Ambassador Gambold highlighted similarities in history, tradition, culture, religion and lifestyle between Mongolia and Bhutan. He expressed his eagerness to foster relations between the two countries further and emphasized the potential for mutual learning and cooperation. At the meeting, the two sides exchanged views on strengthening diplomatic relations and identifying avenues and identifying avenues for expanding cooperation in various fields, including the exchange of ideas and experience between the parliaments of the two countries. The two parties reaffirmed their commitment for forging a strong partnership that would bring mutual benefits for the two countries. The 2024 regular elections for the State Great Khural or Parliament of Mongolia are scheduled to take place on June 28, 2024. Votes from citizens residing abroad will be collected from June 20 to 23, 2024. A total of 1,337 candidates from 19 parties and two coalitions, as well as 42 independent candidates, will run for the 2024 regular elections for the state Great Khural of Mongolia. They will be 2 million 238,000 eligible voters. The elections for the state Great Horal shall be conducted by a mixed electoral system. 78 members shall be elected by majority representation and the remaining 48 members shall be elected by proportional representation. According to the resolution, in alignment with Mongolia's regional development concept, IMARCs were divided into seven zones whereas the capital city was divided into six zones, resulting in the establishment of 13 electoral constituencies for the state Great Horal of Mongolia. Election campaigning commences on the day candidates are issued their identity cards and concludes 24 hours before polling day or before midnight on the day preceding polling day. Therefore, it's permissible to engage in electoral campaigning from June 10th until June 26, 2024. International observers and journalists play an important role in not only informing and promoting Mongolia's election activities worldwide, but also in identifying issues for consideration. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe's Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights will monitor the electoral process in its member countries and will provide reports and recommendations. According to past elections, over 300 observers typically come from the organization. The General Election Committee has extended invitations to international organizations and election bodies of foreign countries to observe the 2024 regular elections for the state Great Horal of Mongolia. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We will see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Goodbye.